everybody. How you doing today? It's kind of decent here. Uh, not too bad, but all you have to do is wait a little while and the weather will change probably. But anyway, uh, now that we've talked about the weather, let's get to our subject matter. The title of the lesson today is called The Enemies of God. <laughs> and uh, this might upset a few people. Uh, but anyway, you might think that the enemies of God are the atheists. And, of course, the agnostics, and, of course, those world religions that do not recognize God's sovereignty or his authority, or those religions that do not recognize the Christ as the Son of God. And they're all enemies of God, but we need to consider others who are enemies of God and might not know it. And we might consider what we read about the Antichrist in 1 John 2 and verse 22 teaches us that anyone who denies that Jesus is the Christ, and when one denies Christ, in effect, they deny God also. And so there's a lot of religions who claim to be worshiping God, but yet they reject the authority of Jesus Christ. And so, in a sense, they become the enemies. See, this group of people are those who deny the lordship of Jesus, they reject his authority, and they do not keep his commandments. So Jesus taught us that his commandments are the Father's commandments. So they come from God. And so the passage described these people as liars, and we know the final outcome of all liars. If you remember from Revelation 21, 8, they should be cast in the lake of fire. And so when we know and understand what God wants from us and we reject such by living our own selfish ways, we are guilty of being the Antichrist and that makes us an enemy of God. And we know there is uh, other people who claim to have a relationship with God, but they don't live that way. We'll, we'll read from Titus uh, 1 and verse 16 later on. All right, the people that add to God's word and take away from God's word become the enemies of God because God's word is the authoritative source in religion and when people add to or remove from it, they deny it. See, God's word is sufficient for everything we need concerning salvation. We don't need to add anything to it. We don't need to take anything away from it. It is fully sufficient. And most people who... Uh, do these things usually have a creed book that says the Bible is fully sufficient to accomplish what God wants done. And so it's very strange coming from people like this, but those who teach differently from what is written are the enemies of God. And then, of course, we have those people we call hypocrites. They're, they're probably the greatest enemies of God. And those who are putting on a front for others, but their hearts are not dedicated to the world, the word, and they dedicate themselves to the world. And so we must remember that the people of the world watch us to see how we live and how we behave when we are not in church. And the moment they see us doing that which we have said is wrong, they are happy, primarily because they do not want to serve God and they are happy that those who serve God are no better than they are. So actually, these people do not serve God, but they are pretending to serve God. And that's what hypocrites are. See, Titus 1.16 uh, mentions the phrase that they... they. I just drew a blank also. Okay, they profess to know God, but their deeds deny him. And so, yeah, that's definitely a problem when people don't live up to the standard which God has given. You know, about 100, 250 years ago, there was a preacher by the name of George Whitfield, and he had a sermon titled The Almost Christian, and that was based on Acts 26, 28, where Paul told uh, Felix, uh, almost thou persuade, or Festus said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul says, I wish you were. But uh, almost, when you think about it, means close, but not quite. And many people want to be seen as Christians, but they really are not. They love the world too much to turn from it, and they love themselves too much to deny themselves. 
So they pretend to be Christians, when in reality, they are not. Yes, pretend Christians are very dangerous for the church. It gives people the wrong ideas. And when others see them living like the world, but yet claiming to be Christian, uh, let's, let's face it, you have to put some questions in there. You have to wonder about that. See, in reality, anyone who continues to sin becomes the enemy of God. Those who have never obeyed the gospel are enemies of God. And those who serve anything other than God, whether it's idolatry or covetousness or selfishness themselves or whatever, I mean, they become enemies of God. In Romans 6, verse 16, he said, Do you not know that when you present yourselves to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey? either of sin resulting in death, or of obedience resulting in righteousness. And Jesus himself said, you're either with me or against me. There is no halfway, there is no neutral territory. You're one or the other. And so uh, when we allow sin to continue our lives, we become the enemy of God because God doesn't want us to be practicing sin. See, in James 4 and 4, he says, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Uh, so, I mean, it says right there, if the world has too much for you that you want to put your confidence in, you are an enemy of God. You know, that's why John said uh, to give up the things of this world, uh, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. I mean, they're all going to perish with the using. They're not going to survive. And uh, so that's just, if you're doing those things, then you are continuing in sin. And when you continue in sin, there's no longer a sacrifice that's suitable for you. Uh, Hebrews 10.26 tells us that. And then, of course, uh, we, could all, we could spend the whole time talking about the great enemy of God, which is, goes by the name of Satan, the devil. See, throughout the scriptures, he is referred to as the enemy. And his followers also become enemies of God. The enemy comes to seek and to destroy. And what he seeks to destroy is your soul. And that's what he's trying to do. So that's why he's an enemy of God. Uh, the parable of so the, the tares, wheat and the tares. Uh, God sowed the good soil, and then the, the enemy comes and sows bad seed in there. So Satan, yes, definitely is the enemy of God. And those who serve Satan, even though they may not be what you call Satan worshipers, if they live according to the world, they are serving Satan. And so they are the enemies of God. And so we need to learn to be obedient to God and do what he says. And perhaps we can be called what Abraham was called. Remember, Abraham believed God and he was called the friend of God. We become his friend when we obey him, when we serve him, when we honor him. And so you just have to ask yourself, what are you doing to make your friendship with God stronger? I mean, we always have to consider this. And nobody likes to brag about the fact that they're an enemy of God. But when the truth is presented to them, I mean, they have to see that. So if you're in this, ball, if you're in this ballpark that you claim to be a Christian, but yet here's what you do. You talk like everybody else talks. Your, your, your language is no different than anybody else's. Guess what? You're an enemy of God. When you go and participate in riotous living and doing those things that the world thinks is fun, and of course we know the world rejects God's message of abstinence. The world rejects God's ideals. And so they just go along. So if you're going along with them, guess what? You are an enemy of God. And so uh, we, we have to make sure we do not deny the Christ. We have to acknowledge his lordship, his deity, and of course we have to observe all of his commandments. 
the commandments he has given us and of course the commandments that come from the disciples and the the writers of the new testament we have to do all those things if we want to be pleasing to god and because jesus said there go and baptize all nations teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you see a lot of people they, they go through the you know what we call the initial steps to hear believe repent confess be baptized and that's it that's the extent of what they get to receive salvation and they don't grow they don't add to their faith they don't uh, study god's word they don't recognize those things that are that god is not pleased with because they don't know what they are if you never read the bible see that's what paul said about coveting i would not have known coveting had god not said thou shalt not covet and so yes there are rules that god has given us and we must abide by those rules so ask yourself and i am i an enemy of god and if you recognize this about yourself if you're honest you know you're supposed to examine yourself second corinthians 13 5 if you are honest with yourself and you realize i have not been faithful as i should have been then get get busy and doing those things god has commanded you to do and become a child of god be faithful to god help others become faithful to god and you'll be a friend of god and you won't be an enemy but just do your own thing and you'll be an enemy of god and we know what's going to happen to the enemy on judgment day there's nobody who's an enemy of god is going to go into heaven so that only leaves one alternative and i'll let y'all figure that one out so that's our lesson for the day consider these thoughts uh, and pray about them and help others see the reality of this if you like what you hear uh send me a like or uh make a comment if you have any questions be sure and ask so we'll we'll leave it for here right now and y'all have a good day all right bye bye for now